Okay, so I'm joined again with my friend Francis Zhu, and we're feeling to explore the topic of guidance from the Spirit today. Um, such a blessing to to be with you again um, today, Francis. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. I'd like to start just there's a line or two in the course um, it's actually it's actually right at the back and um, I think this is a page it might be at the very end of the, the entire course that it says um, it said as for the rest and there's a couple of sentences in is in that section I remember that I found very powerful over the years and um, they kind of stayed with me and a lot of it um, basically feels like this message of, you know, guidance. And I think Jesus says something like, um, you know, you have, within you, you have the perfect teacher who has like the perfect answer in every situation <laughs> for you and everyone. And, and this, this teacher never makes a mistake. And he says something like, would you say that about yourself and your ability? You know, like he kind of has a bit of a joke with us. But there's something really like, it's like, wow, that there's a teacher within me. The spirit is within me that has the perfect answer mm. um, in every situation, you know, and not just for me, for everyone, like every single, you know. And so mm. that idea I've, I've always found very like, I was like, wow, you know, um, almost like, I guess, just really connecting with how true that must that idea must be. Uh, and yet, I just want to say that um, um, like, I guess it just almost feels like, like anything, I suppose, um, an area like that or guidance is, it's almost like, you know, if, if um, the ego is also going to want to get in there and and try to, um, you know, try to uh, just twist that idea, and even have. I, I'm just. I'll just speak from my own experience that, where you know, like it might be just in small little things, like um, you know, when I'm to get up, or when I'm to have a shower, or what I'm to eat, or what I'm to wear. It's almost like sometimes it feels almost like a bit crippling, in that there's, you know, there can be an ego voice going, "That's not," you know, or or, or a voice, you know, doubting something that I'm doing, um, and it might also almost want me to believe that, you know, this is, you know, <laughs> there's a spirit saying, no, you shouldn't be wear that, you should wear this, and so um, I guess I just want to um, start off with that because I think there's somewhere else in the course where Jesus says, I think it's in the section, um, what's that part where he talks about how to have the day you want to have. Mm. Um, I forget what it's called. It's in chapter 30, I think. Um, uh, I've forgotten the name of it now, but there's these guidelines he sets for, and he yeah. says it's best it's best not to get too preoccupied with, you know, with every kind of detail or every situation because you can almost get like, how or should I do this? Should I do this? And mm. so I, I I want to just um, uh, open up by just um, asking if you have any. Um, any comments around any of that and around how, like, um, how guidance, you know, can be, um, I'd almost like how, how do we, how do we, how do we stay, um, how do we stay almost light around the idea of guidance and not, uh, and not, um, have the ego come in there with all its, its so-called help or attempts to kind of tell us what, we need to do. Um, yeah, could you just um, talk around that, please, Francis? Yeah. Yeah, I think gu guidance for me is um, a really crucial step, and the the I think the most important effect that it had on me is this um, the cha it, it changed the direction of the thinking and that's what 
really、um, the course is aiming at is to change the way that you think, you know. And I think、um, it seems like at, at the beginning, I I did have a have a lot of hard time accepting the idea of guidance. Just I think there was actually mixing different. Um, ideas and different teachings in the course, and put them together, and see that I can't really reconcile them in my mind.、Um, you know, if there is a guidance that implies that you know you can you can make a choice, and yet to say the course also mentioned the script is written, so there. And also, the world is a illusion. So why does that even matter? You know. At the beginning, that became my hang-ups.、Um, that I almost like I wanted to figure it out in my mind before we, before I can accept this idea of guidance or even to apply it. But、um, I think I I, I probably、um, asked that question in a very early on. Gathering or retreat that I attended,、um, maybe the first retreat I attended with David, and I raised that question because it really bothered me.、Um, and he, I remember the answer he gave me was an answer that I could not comprehend with my logical mind. He, I think he started to talk about quantum physics and just the reality and the potentiality and everything, and I just didn't understand. the the relationship between my question and his answer, and yet something very deep happened when he was answering. I just suddenly got it. I I don't know how I got it, and there I suddenly got it、um, at a very deep level. And for some reason, that that did it. I actually just opened up the part of my mind that was very doubtful or just very、um, resistant to that idea. And of course, I was resistant at that point because I, I never、um, trusted. I never trusted there was、uh, something that was helping me or that could really, you know, guide me or point it to me to the to the to freedom that I was、um, pursuing. You know, it was the, the thinking at that point. It was all about this individual and. Me and independent. I am the、um, the independent source, and I need to rely on myself to achieve anything, including awakening. I need to depend on myself to find the way and figure things out. So, but what happened for me was.、Um, That did for me. My mind opened up, and I really wanted to to try give it a go, just to follow. And of course, at the beginning, a lot of the doubt was related to whether I can hear, or whether I can trust what I hear.、Um, how do I know it is not the ego manipulation? Is truly the Holy Spirit, especially when it applies to to the form, which at the point. Matters so much, you know. That's that's why I I'm I was saying the direction of the thinking can be completely transformed because at that point, part of the reason that、um, people or myself couldn't trust whether I could hear guidance was because I was afraid. Part of the mind was afraid to hear guidance. Part of the mind was afraid that I would lose control of the external world or. The guidance will guide me to 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 do things or to let go of things that will affect me. So、um, so there was definitely this kind of thinking that outside outside world and the form determines my happiness and what I do and what I get what I perceive determines my happiness and freedom. And what this body does and what this body have、um, determines my happiness. So in that way, there is 
there is a backward thinking, and there's a lot of fear about what outside world will turn to.、Um, then there is a fear of of specific results. Actually, there is a fear of the spirit will guide me towards direction that I didn't want to go. So, therefore, there was this doubt, and there was this voice that. Was saying to me that no, you don't, you can't hear guidance. How do you know? Even sometimes,、um, there was this feeling. Okay, this is the direction I should move into.、Um, there was always this voice. How do I know whether it's a spirit? How do I? Maybe it's the ego. Maybe I just need to need to nothing. Maybe I just need to change my mind. You know, all of that can become a, a cliche to stop. Stop anyone from moving forward. But now, looking back, I have to say that following guidance is essential, is crucial. Not because, in the end, everything matters. Not because, in the end, the illusory world truly matters. But it really will change the way that the mind thinks about the world. It really will change the way that、um, the mind that is. Identified with the self, it would change the identification. You know, knowing that it's almost like knowing that is not the goal, but you still have to move towards it. You have, you still have to move towards as if you know the guidance is on at the level of form, as if you still have a choice. But, but to be honest, we have to also be honest. That's that's where. The mind is, you know, if we still perceive an outside world and separate individuals, and still believe that、um, we are just this individual body, then we we really have a lot to do in terms of transforming the mind. And guidance is definitely a crucial step to achieve that transformation. So for me. I was applying that, really listening to, to the spirit, and the, the way to really、um, strengthen the confidence that I can hear the spirit is really to move forward when I, when I hear it instead of sitting with it and, and doubting it, because the the logical mind can never figure out whether it's the spirit or whether it's the ego. If it sits with it, it's just gonna create more fear, you know. Um, so, just when I feel okay, maybe it is the the, the spirit's guidance, and I just want to move forward it with it. And the more I move forward with it, the clearer I can hear it. I think part of the course I actually mentioned it, like the how much you can hear depends on、uh, whether you feel whether you feel to hear or not. Something to that line, around that line, that you you'll can, hear you'll. You'll hear it to the extent that you're、um, that you're desiring only that, something something like that. Yeah, or you're not free to hear something like that. Right. right so, right. but I I just feel like the more you move with it, the less you're afraid of the guidance because it is not meant to create fear. It's actually meant to like following that really. I'm gonna bring us a lot of peace, and that's actually one of the the parameters I use to know that is the spirit. Because as soon as I move towards that direction, in form, even、um, I just feel a lot of peace and a lot of happiness and joy just just from within, and then just gives me a lot of confidence. But、um, yeah, I. The, your question around how not to be too stressed about every single thing, just knowing that, you know, sometimes I would just pray that make it really obvious so that I can't miss it, so I don't have to sit there and guess. And when it is truly obvious, then I will always just pay attention. Okay, this is really obvious. This door is closed, and let's not waste time to push. What is closed, and let's just wait for、uh, one of the windows that that is open. So then, just it's really practice and the willingness to hear. It's really not about not getting it wrong. Actually, I think that that's where the 
the part that you mentioned the ego can come in is, is it just wants a fear to get it wrong and then get obsessed about whether I get it right or I get it wrong. But truly, the most important thing is the willingness to hear, and it's not about past form or action whether I did the past wrong, but what about now? Do I am I willing to hear if? Everything is obvious. If everything is obvious, am I willing to follow the obvious signs? If nothing is obvious, then I will just pray to make it or be patient. But I'm not gonna spend time to try to be right about anything. And I can guarantee you, you don't have to worry about that. Just keep moving forward. Really, keep moving forward. There is no way you can make a mistake. The spirit is behind everything you do. In the end. That will become your experience. That will become your experience. This kind of question of whether I did it right or wrong will stop to come up. You know, you just keep moving forward with strong willingness and attentiveness for the signs and sim and symbols. And also, you resist if there is a resistance. If everything is obvious and there is a resistance, just pay attention to that. Don't lie to yourself. Don't say I can't hear it. Just just pay attention. I. I'm scared to move to that direction. There is a fear. Help me, help me make it easy, or just yeah, be with me in this. If it is a clear, obvious direction, then in the end, those kind of questions of、um, whether I did it right or wrong wouldn't come up because in the end, you realize that the form is written truly. And you you can make a mistake in that way, and also the form does not determine your happiness. So, so th- th- there is no kind, no right or wrong、um, judgment outside. Knowing that they're not the cause of anything, then it's all about the the mind. It's all about forgiveness. You pull completely back from looking without, and it's just all about what comes up. Judgment conclusions that comes up in the mind, and you just forgive. So, so I would say, guidance is so essential, and in the end, it will, you will outgrow that. In the end, the mind that is turned upside,、uh, right side up, will outgrow the tool. But this is the tool to turn the mind from. Upside down to right side up. Could you share any thoughts that come to you around? I'm hearing like I'm sort of. You know, we both、uh, had you know several years living in. Living miracles community, and、uh, there tends to be. Let's say I'm, I'm sort of almost like picturing、um, a few different types of experiences.、Uh, one can be almost like in a like a follower type role,、um, and you know, then there can become like、uh, what seems like roles of leading, if you like,、uh, um, leading projects, and、uh, then when Even some of those roles are like drop away. There's these just these, you know, collaborations. I guess it's all collaboration. But、um, I was wondering, could you could you share anything around、um, how, say, say being?、Um, I think I heard you say once about how important it was for you to,、um, you know, and how content you were, how happy you were to be. Uh, in that follower a role initially when you those initial times when you were at the monastery and and just in service like how can you tell us、um, can you tell me how if at all those kind of roles、um, helped you to strengthen the that inner voice and that、um, sense that you are being guided、um, yeah thanks oh.、So- So helpful! I can't tell you. It is so helpful because, because the truth is, anyone else outside of me is not separate from me. That's the truth. That is not the perception, which is fine. But, 
when I give my trust truly, not just blind follow with an attitude of no. That kind of following,、um, I don't know that is helpful. Maybe it is even, but I don't know, because I was actually genuinely want to give my trust over to someone who has walked before me. And when I did that, all the trust, in the end, I realized was given to myself. There was never gonna be give and then you lose, never. And that's actually the biggest lesson I I I learned through experience is to give is to receive, and that the the most、um, the most obvious thing that I gave so much. You in the last few years was the trust, and it all came back. So I can give you an example. Like when I first got,、um, got in, into the course, I remember there was someone who told me that the Holy Spirit is yourself or something. And it it could be the first course group that I went to or the first course meeting I went to, and I I can notice this fear rising up. There was this clear fear. And maybe it is just the fear of identify with the spirit,、um, but in my mind there are thoughts that are associated with fear, and the thoughts were if I am the spirit, then I'm hopeless. I I'm I don't know. I don't know who to turn to anymore. Who can help me? Because I don't feel I I got anything cleared. You know, everything is a mess, and I'm so unhappy. And you're telling me that the 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 help come from within. I couldn't hear it. I honestly, that just created more fear for me, that to know that help only comes from within. So at that point, I, you know, I I really wanted to find someone who could give me answers. I really wanted to find something that's bigger than me that could give me answers. And I did, because the mind was. Where it was, so you know, it brings teachers and people who walked before me, and also the spirit concept at that point had to be some something that is outside of me, outside its body at least, that can guide this this lost person or lost soul, you know, can reach happiness and freedom. So I, that's where I started all this. Spiritual search and mind training with, so in you know, in the handset I can say that I did.、Um, I was very happily just wanted to give my trust in people because I didn't really know how to trust anyone, and that wasn't、um, the thing that I grew up with. That was taught that you need to trust people, you need to trust God, you need to trust the spirit. I was actually probably growing up with you. You can't trust anyone but yourself. So figure it all out on your own. Be very independent and rely on yourself. And that is not just in terms of survival and everything. It's like in the mind as well. I I don't really trust have this kind of ability. I have to say that I I would trust anything. So that period of being a follower, it's actually in form. It looks like you're following other people's instruction, but in the mind, a lot was happening. Was I really wanted to see that they, you know, they are following the spirit, and I trust their their devotion. I trust that they could hear the spirit because I couldn't at the point, and I just really supported them and really. Give my trust to them, and I tell you that what it did was that I just couldn't believe how much confidence I started to to gain of this inner voice that I hear, and I, I didn't really transfer. I didn't even need to transfer the trust back to myself. It just happened, and it, of course it makes sense because ne- anything I gave to another person. I receive simultaneously. I receive simultaneously. So the trust that I gave, time after time, year after year, is actually an inner trust. It's a trust muscle that is in the mind, that is very, very from this closed-off, and private, 
an exclusive kind of state of mind suddenly become this open and want to support and want other people to really get it, and then you know it's is just a very different mindset. But then I just suddenly realize I feel very certain. I I don't have a lot of doubt. Those kind of doubt thoughts. I don't really have that a lot with other people. I I will pay attention to that. Sometimes I know there is a habit of a, doubting other people or attacking. But I was really paying attention when those things coming up because I know the purpose of all this is not to buy into the doubt thoughts and follow that. The whole purpose is to forgive those doubt thoughts and forgive my perception of other people. So when I keep doing that. When I hear something, I don't have a lot of doubt thoughts to myself. I don't have those kind of thoughts、uh, coming up, and I just know how big a difference that is. Because I was so hesitant and uncertain about myself in the before, and suddenly I just felt like, oh my God, there is a strength, inner strength, and there is a certainty that just started to develop over the years. So, yeah, that's and you know, as you said, in in the end, I was given a role to lead, but there is absolutely no difference because I could trust that the spirit within, and then I would just follow because there was such a willingness to follow the spirit, and the mind has been washed that I just really did not believe I I knew anything, I knew any kind of. Even in terms of healing, I didn't really think I know, so I had to rely on the spirit. I used to rely on other people to tell me what to do, but then I rely on what I hear from within. I had to rely on that. So it's like I still feel I'm very much a follower because that voice is telling me, and it's not come from the logical mind or analytical mind, and then. What happens after that, even, is this trans transfer of trust to everybody. I don't really. I feel I trust everybody here. The spirit. I f- actually feel the spirit is moving everyone, and it's there is really not、um, a choice in that anymore. Like I can choose to hear the spirit, and you can choose to hear the ego. That kind of thinking is gone. So, what, what、um, it is right now is that only the spirit can move people. So everybody is following the stu-、uh, the spirit. I don't need to lead. I don't need to follow, because the spirit is the only leader, and everybody are following whether they know it or not. And that's the only thing that needs to change is people doubting that. There, there is only spirit, and there is not even an ego. They're they're doubting that, so they, you know, they sit with it, and they have questions. But really, there is no ego. The spirit is the only existence, and the spirit is moving everyone. Occasionally, I hear、um, like people, if you like, on this path say things like,、um, you know, my Holy Spirit told me to do this,、uh, or that that kind of thing. And I guess for me,、um, I think one of the things that excites me the most around the area of guidance is. That it helps me to, when I'm actually say joining with someone, and we start to hear the same thing, that that just that、um, experience, if you like, helps to remind me, or it helps to sort of melt away the idea that I'm separate. Because if we're hearing the same thing, you know, over and over, it's like. Really is, you know, there really is just the one, the one mind, and、um, 
Um, I kind of feel to ask a question that I, I remember uh, our friend um, Gavin actually asked you and JP during the silent retreat, and it was around this area. And he said he said something like, "Because um, you two, you and JP were so deeply joining and collaborating, um, you know, prior to the retreat and throughout the retreat." And um, I think Gavin's question was something like, okay, that's, that's all fine, something that you shared, but he said, what if, what if, you know, you hear something and JP hears something else? What do you do with that? And I, I remember much of what you said, but I actually, actually would like just to hear now, like um, anything that, that might come through for you now, um, um, just, just around that area of, you know, because... I think I don't know. I, do, I think for me, the, the, it almost feels like that's just that idea has probably been the source of fear, and I may have used some used that as a justification at times, not to not to really join or go into collaborating with others because there was an idea that you know I'm going to miss out on something or I'm I'm going to not get to do what actually feels <laughs> like to do, you know, um, but. You know, um, yeah, one of the things that I heard you and JP share about that night, and, you know, you, you share in a moment around it, is that that just didn't seem to happen, you know. So, um, yeah, um, any thoughts around that, Francis? Yeah. That's the whole thing, like, the Holy Spirit, there is only one spirit. Nobody has its own spirit that will give conflict guidance there is only one spirit that's guiding the whole plan and everybody's movement and other people's movement are all in collaboration are the are different pieces of the big big picture so so that's that's actually another um, effect I guess when the mind tr was transformed through really listening um, and following the guidance was to realize there is no separate and different conflicting guidance. The guidance is the same. It's, it's one and it's the same. And it eventually leads to, to this realization of the one guidance is from within and we are all connected and all connected to this one, one spirit. Another thing that came to my mind while you were talking was nothing is what it seems. Um, which means that, you know, we don't really assume what, you know, what things really are about. So, for example, in in our community, sometimes people will come together and talk about a direction or that things that they need to move forward with and you could hear a lot of opinions you could hear I really feel this way and then other people will say things like this is what they hear or what they feel and maybe some others will have present different ideas but I'd, I you know there is no need to conclude okay everybody hears different guidance that's not necessarily what it seems like or what it means. All that it's calling for is a deeper communication. And that's, it's, it's actually really essential to be able to hear one guidance is that you don't hold communication from each other. If you hold and, and hide and only give away piece of the communication or information, then people could yeah, just have twisted or distorted way of of seeing things or even hearing things. So all that we're doing, even about guidance, is just to explore feelings and thoughts. Because I know sometimes I have a feeling towards certain things, but the thoughts can be distorted. Because I, I, the feeling is very abstract, and the thoughts seems to be very specific. So I have to be willing to say this, this thoughts is the best way I can to describe this feeling but I'm really open to see what it's truly about but this is what I can present and this is the best I can do 
to to share how I feel, and if everybody does the same thing, in the end you see that okay, maybe everybody just present a piece of information, or maybe everybody actually are talking about the same thing, but their way of presenting or summarize in a specific way are very different. That's why they look different. So it, it's actually just really,、um, you know, even to 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 go with guidance, especially in a group, it's very very good training for for communication actually, and for not drawing conclusions and and just wash away this I know mine, I know what I feel, I know we should move forward, but just explore and. You know, we have been doing this a lot, like with every day life. Just, you know. Also, I I really like it because it feels a, a opportunity for me always to be really honest, like an opportunity to get in touch with how I feel and and also feel into which way of presenting it is the most honest way. It really get in touch with the feeling. Then I'll present it, and I want to hear everyone else. Then it's very always very clear. After everybody does that, it's always very clear. And that example with the silent retreat was、um, that I facilitated with JP was there was a, not not a disagreement. There was not a different opinion ever. But we are very very closely、um, linked and very honest with with each other. There is nothing that. Needs to be held back or wanted to be held back, so in that way, it's just very easy and obvious. Yeah, beautiful. You you kind of touched on this, like a question's popped in my mind. You've kind of touched on it with, with your response there, but、uh, I think I would like you to say a little more around.、Um, Uh, just hearing, like the importance. It almost this all just wow. It all relates to guidance. It all relates to happiness. Like somewhere it's kind of like because you were saying that if thoughts are withheld, like maybe preferences are held onto, or private thoughts are held, if. Uh, for example, someone is not feeling safe enough to share what they're thinking. All of these things、um, will actually、um, play a part almost in、um, in the, that say the that one guidance not being heard clearly. But I'm, I'm kind of almost getting into contrast that, and this is what I'm feeling. Say that last example that you gave, and why say with JP, and why. There was never any conflict. You always heard the same thing. I, this is how I feel. You, you comment on it, but feel like because there's such such a depth of trust between both of you, nothing's being withheld. Therefore, it's almost like it's just telepathic, and there's nothing. It's like、um, you you're both just hearing the same thing because it's completely natural.、Mm-hmm. When we're not withholding, we're not saying, oh, you know, oh, I really want to do this, but I'm not going to say that because I'm going to think that, you know, blah blah blah, whatever. But everything is just. Put out, and and there's no attachment to anything.、Um, any any comments or anything that you can sort of elaborate on?、Perhaps? Yeah, yeah, and that's it. That's crucial. And even if there is an attachment,、um, that that's fine too, as long as it's not, you know, held as a secret. Like some,、uh, you know, we talk a lot sometimes, saying, "I just have a really strong feeling to go this way," and I know maybe. There is some kind of preference in the past, but at this point, I honestly don't know whether it's coming from the spirit or the preference. So please, how do you feel?、Um, you know, sometimes the just the very openness. There is no no fear of expressing that. You know, it could be a preference, but I don't know. It just feels really good, and、um, and there is openness to be wrong. There is openness just to. To share all the thoughts. The most important, I guess, for me is, I want to do this for myself. I want to use every opportunity to find out what how I truly feel, and、um, that's, I guess, the most important for me. Not to defend any position, defend a preference, or defend 
、um, that I can hear or defend any kind of things. Just to be honest with myself is is so important. Just feels like such a like juicy area that you know it's like just the you know the collaborations the the、um, I think Jesus said I mean in the course I think he says something like you know underneath all the the seeming myriad of problems that we might. You know, have in our mind at different times. You know, this fear, that. You know, these different things. He says, like underlying all of it, like the the very root, the very root core belief is is a is a deep sense of being separate from. You know, separate from source, separate from you know anything else, like being completely alone and. I don't know. I just kind of get the feeling, and and that just that just that thought or that belief is is where all the guilt is as well. It's like I'm, you know, I'm guilty. I'm alone. I'm like they're all they're all tied in, and somehow this guidance. It's like the idea of guidance and the the practicing of the guidance. It's like it's almost like like an opportunity and a and a potentially like a fun way,、uh, like almost like. You know, it can be seen as like a fun experiment, almost like joining. Joining is like I think Jesus says, you know, the so the way, you know, there's only the one problem, so the one, you know, being separate, and the one solution is is around joining. So、um, I know for me, it feels like you know, like the stepping stones of joining、uh, have seemed like you know, joining with what looked like with a brother, you know, and just I don't know, it just feels like.、Um, So much,、um, like yeah, just juice and life and、um, opportunity to come together and really start, you know, with that intention of actually, like, truly joining and not、um, and not just, you know, <laughs> saying, oh, you know, I'm I'm having a conversation with this person, but I'm not even really listening to what they're saying, and we're not. I'm just holding my own thoughts. I'm still making my own decisions. You know that. It's like somewhere about. I think that's one of the areas too that that feels exciting that relates to this too is about not deciding things alone, and and that even doesn't necessarily mean joining with the brother. It could be just really the willingness to stop and join with that, you know, that、um, uh, join in prayer with the spirit in my mind. You know, like、um, it, it just feels like the stepping stone of joining with another does feel like it's it's really. Helped me, yeah. Yeah, I I can't say how important. I can't, yeah, emphasize this enough around joining with a brother because truly it is our brothers are used.、Um, Jesus said in the course, you know, we're going to God through our brothers, and they're really、um, perfect mirrors to to show us what. You know what blocks or beliefs that we're still holding on to, and a lot of trust me, most of those blocks to the awareness of love's presence are unconscious. And if they are unconscious, we have no idea they even are there. And so that's why you know we use our brothers to bring it up. And right now, like in. In the daily life, a lot of the joining with the brothers are purely just about seeming decisions and logistics, because there, you know, not a lot of、uh, stories or、uh, emotions or、um, grievance that needs to join or express. But it's all、uh, a lot of joining around around logistic and decisions. And why do we want to join? Because We can't see the blocks in our mind. If there is a preference, and the preference is to protect a self-concept, and if that is very, very deep and subtle, we can't really see that. So when we come with a brother, that's why 
we also can trust the brother because we have the one same guidance. If everybody, you know, use this as a way to achieve forgiveness, and this is the the same purpose and the same focus. And the same reason they would come together. Everybody is using this to practice tuning into this one guidance. We really can trust each other. Nobody is there to manipulate anything. It's just we're tuning in. And if I have a block that I don't, I'm not even aware. Then other people, if there's any kind of difference that's coming up in terms of directions, decisions, I really want to pay attention to that. You know. You know why is there is a huge direction, the huge difference? How do I feel whether there is a charge? If there is a charge, there is a defensiveness that's arising. There is a protection going on. There is a there is a protection of some kind of self concept that's going on. But you know it doesn't really mean anything that's right or wrong. It's just like everything is used for mind watching. It's always used for letting go of the blocks. And for forgiveness, so yeah, it's, it's really really important. And also, we just I I just noticed over the years how subtle and strong the self autonomy is. You know, it's like there is a very strong desire for self autonomy. That's probably the the only way the ego can survive. Is through thinking that it is autonomous and it, it it is independent, and it also wants personal freedom, personal freedom of anything. I want to be free to be able to blah 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 blah. You can fill the blank, but if it is a personal freedom, you know that's the twisted version of wanting true freedom of the mind, wanting union, wanting impersonal. But the ego always twisted. And then once it's it's twisted, it will pursue that. So it always wants some kind of self autonomy. Like, don't tell me what to do. I know what I want. I know what is the、uh, what is freedom, and I know how to achieve it. So it's just very very strong there, yet subtle. Like I just see it so much. That's the best way to actually expose it and let it go is through joining with a brother. The ego doesn't really like that, but the ego can't undo itself. If you if you give the ego the whole the hope to undo itself, it's it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Just as you were talking there,、um, the idea of、um, I think it's the last characteristic of a teacher of God、um, that Jesus mentions in the teacher's manual:、uh, open mindedness. Came to mind when you were something that you said a little bit earlier there around. I、um, oh, just when you said that's right, when you said something like you know、um, if you know there's a reaction or something comes up, you know it's like again it's not that it's a problem, but it's like it's kind of helpful to you know to be willing to kind of look at it. And I was just wondering,、um, maybe I'll just share this. Some I think. There's a little parable that came to my mind that I found really powerful. Something David shared,、um, I heard him share some years ago, and it involved a couple of friends of his.、Um, one of them was、um, a woman who was holding a course group、um, at her place, and and she she'd actually said to David, David around that time was um, um, coming to that course group, I think, and helping. For a period of time, and she actually said to him, "Look, if there's anything at all you see, you know, anything that you can that you hear that you can offer that would help me,、um, please just go for it. You have full license to, you know." So this, there was this complete openness and this invitation to to him, and and、um, the contrast, if you like, was her partner who who actually didn't give. Anything like that invitation? In fact, didn't even wish to join in the meetings, but loved David so dearly and used to get very excited when David came over and wanted to <laughs> invite him to sit with him and watch the basketball matches, for example. And and、um, David said that some feedback that he got from other people observing that was that 
that he was um, being hard on, I think her name was Mary actually, and um, very gentle with this other guy. But he was, he tried to say, well, no, that's not, that's just what you were seeing. That's actually not what was going on at all. Um, it was just that Mary had actually asked for, for the help. And, you know, the other guy was, um, it was, there was no judgment, but he actually just wasn't open to, you know, to hadn't really even in a way taken the first step towards, you know, turning to the spirit. Um, so could you, I think, I think if I've got a question in there, Francis, it's around, it's around the idea of, um, open-mindedness, um, how helpful, um, is that and how like Jesus actually says that it it tends to be I think he says something like it tends to be the last quality or characteristic that is developed in the teacher of God um, like how important is it and how like how is it something how can we develop that or is it just again is this just one of those things that just you know starts to develop as we start to strengthen in, in trusting and any thoughts around that yeah, I think it happens after um, development of trust and, and many other um, steps. Open-mindedness is inevitable. Um, I think open-mindedness is, for me, um, is really not to judge how to perceive anything. It's really about that, not to judge how to perceive anything, um, even not to judge the way you know to achieve healing. Um, so that just giving everything um, over to 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 be used by the spirit and to have spirit guide that for me is, I guess, what connect in my mind as open-mindedness for example if if people you know I think we talked about it last time when people are asking to join with me in any way I also know I just know that is somehow a mind a part of the mind is calling for love and the way to give love I don't know but the purpose is always to give love, always, always. That's the only purpose, and and then I have to see that I don't really know the way, and that is the open-minded part. I don't know how the form would look like, what what it means to give love, what it looks like to give love. I have no idea, and I have to be guided by the spirit. Sometimes it could look like pretty harsh by the ego's judgment, and that is where forgiveness comes in. For, you know, I have to forgive all this judgment around any kind of form because the intention is, is to extend love in any way that spirit is guiding. And sometimes, you know, I, I notice when people ask what is what do you see or uh, what is the the block in my mind and there could be some kind of um yeah statement maybe coming up but a lot of the times it just uh could be just a smile a hug or just silence or just be with the person i just truly don't know what is truly helpful so yeah, that I guess we just want to be so open, so that this body is used so fully without any resistance to anything. Actually, reminds me. I a few years ago, I, I actually did ask. I'd forgotten about it until you just until you just spoke. Then I, I actually did ask David that that very question. Uh, he was driving me to the airport and. Um, and he just laughed. <laughs> when I, I asked him, you know, please just tell me what, anything you're saying. You know, he just laughed, and he he did end up, you know, mentioning a couple of specifics around, you know, just um, how he could see the community was something really helpful for me, and that was one thing I remember very clearly. But yeah, I guess just the example of, like you said, the 
the just the total like humility in it's like well I don't know you know but um, yeah so uh, um, I uh, and now maybe this is <clears throat> where we're going to um, wrap this up today I just wondered because I I, I, um, I don't think we're going to have the opportunity in the next couple of days to to do another one of these, and I know it's not too far away, only a few days that you're actually going to be flying out. So it mm. it may be that this is um, you're going to be travelling for several months. So uh, it may be that this you know is the last of these for a while. And I just wondered if you had anything you wanted to share about anything actually really um, <laughs> but I, thought, I just want to say specifically the one that comes to my mind is um, I just feel all this joy around um, you guys heading to Europe and South Africa and and I just wondered and, and it sort of feels like one of those one of the areas it sort of feels like it's around um, that beautiful idea which I think came through you was it of like was it like uh, quantum love true love never ends that Somehow this tour is is like a demonstration of that. And um, do you have anything you want to share around, um, uh, you know, the tour, the upcoming tour? Because um, um, this might be, like I said, this might be the last chance we um, <laughs> we have for a while to talk. So yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, um, I I share the excitement that I. I'm so excited to go back to Europe. I feel a deep connection. I can't really explain with what or why, but I um, feel there is a calling for me to go. And so it just feels really beautiful. And I just feel, yeah, with the true love never ends, if anything, I guess, we just want to demonstrate that everything works together for good and what we tend to fear in terms of um, uh, ending of a phase in a relationship or in anything really the fear of loss the fear of sacrifice is not true because we here we are after going through that phase and watched everything and then you know we're still together, but not in a box, not in a codependent relationship. And the, um, everything that is gone, but on, the only thing left is this universal love and connection. And we just want to meet everyone and extend from that place that there is absolutely nothing to fear. And you cannot mess it up. You cannot because we had no clue what we were doing when we were going through all of this. And here we are. You know, you can do this. You will heal. The spirit is behind it. And it's it's all leads to love. It all leads to where we truly want and desire. And I'm just so convinced. And I just want to really share this message from just being there, you know, there is no words that can truly deliver this and can assure anyone but but I just feel like our presence is is for that is to be able to tell everyone it's it's okay and there is a different way and we're working that different way and it's just beautiful and this is a path of love, you know, we're truly um yeah, working on the path of love. So yeah, that lesson, love is the way I walk in gratitude, and that's that's we want to assure everyone and demonstrate to everyone. And in the end, I just want to say this. Nobody did anything. I didn't do anything. Spirit has has guided me the whole way through, and the Spirit is doing all the healing. So there is really nothing I can do to teach anyone, but I can be there to show that this is a, a, a pathway of love. That's what I'm. I'm going to to tell people. Thank you so much for just being so willing 
to be used by the Spirit. And I just want to say that you and the friends you're traveling with are living demonstrations that true love never ends. <laughs> and um, I just love you and thank you so much for your time and for Aww. all these joinings. I so appreciate it. I really appreciate the opportunity as well. So I just really want to tell you that. Thank you so much, Colin, for all these interviews. And I hope that I have a chance, if not on the road, maybe after. But thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm, I'm, I think I emailed you about this, but I, I, I tell you what, I feel really inspired um, getting active and getting moving forward with, with this book. It just feels wonderful. And um, so, you know, we, it may be that I'm, you know, occasionally just emailing there may be a few little questions around that, but it, it, it feels just absolutely inspiring and uh, I'm, I'm just, um, yeah, I'm just flowing with it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's like, it's actually like, you know, because it feels like the content is so, um, so fresh that it's I'm listening for the first time and I'm with you it's like I'm with you you know and it's like yeah I'm with you so <laughs> yeah uh, that's thank fine. You. <laughs> yeah okay um happy travels <laughs> thank you